So in this video, we're going to be seeing the tragic conclusion to the Peloponnesian War, uh, dealing with Alcibiades, the Sicilian expedition, and the, uh, the final conflict. The, um, the situation in Athens during the, uh, during the, the truce is essentially a, a, a undecisiveness about how to proceed. And um, the Athenians are sort of um, uh, divided amongst themselves according to how aggressively to proceed, how, uh, uh, how much to push, whether it's necessary to somehow go on the offensive in order to win this war, or uh, to um, to um, persist in the essentially defensive strategy that uh, Pericles had begun the war with, and so these uh, two camps are sort of represented on the one hand by uh, Nicias, who uh, engineered the the peace, the truce that bears his name. He's a uh, he's a, a refined and sophisticated uh, older gentleman who uh, has a number of uh, infirmities and in particular has a very serious liver problem, uh, but is uh, well spoken and uh, is is sort of literally the voice of reason in Athens. And then on the other hand, we have Alcibiades. Um, Alcibiades is uh, is uh, to to put it bluntly, a young hothead. Uh, and uh, the the problem is that uh, not only is he not only is he reckless, but he also has a great deal of influence because there's something compelling about his recklessness in a time in which you know the 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 cautious approach has yielded so little result in you know close to fifteen years of warfare. Alcibiades uh, represents the camp of, of uh, especially young people that want to push this war into overdrive. And uh, he has a great deal of sway uh, because, you know, of his own personal charms. He's uh, made himself the, the darling of the nobility. Uh, he, is, uh, he is friends with, uh, with everyone. Uh, his, his charisma is such that he has been able to, to draw large quantities of, of influential people into his bed, both male and female. And, uh, you know, so as a result, his... His uh, his his vibrancy, his his swagger, uh, his 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 uh, his confidence and his his aggressiveness, uh, you know, it seems very much like the way out of the predicament that Athens is in. He gains uh, quite a considerable following, especially among the young uh, young uh, Athenian men, and uh, he's able to uh, uh, to um, uh, persuade Athens to. Uh, ultimately, uh, to 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 take the next step, uh, which is to create a second front. Uh, something has to be done. Something bold. Something aggressive. Something outside the box. Uh, and this is the idea of the Sicilian expedition. If Athens can take uh, Sicily then uh, it will be able to pursue the war from both directions, from Athens in the east and Sicily in the west. Sparta will be blocked in, surrounded, uh, and, and, uh, and, and thereby uh, brought to its knees. And so uh, there are you know, a number of practical problems with this, but uh, Alcibiades seems able to get away with recklessness, and uh, this kind of... You know, it's just so crazy it might work. Uh, seems like a real, uh, you know, uh, a path of of possibility when there are so few other options other than to uh, to wait for uh, Sparta to give up uh, or for some uh, new uh, problem to or, or solution to develop. So the Sicilian expedition is is funded uh, and established, uh, and uh, you know a a large fleet is 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 uh, uh, is put in place in, with uh, with huge numbers of of, uh, of sailors and marines. Uh, a massive expedition is mounted because uh, Sicily is itself hostile territory. There are a number of important uh, allies of Sparta in. 
uh, Sicily, and uh, even those that are not directly allied with Sparta uh, would hold uh, you know, very little welcome to being conquered and dominated by Athens. And so, uh, you know, uh, all of, uh, of Sicily itself is very likely to be hostile to the Athenians. Uh, Athens has no colonies of its own in Sicily. Uh, Athens is not a colony maker. There's only, uh, you know, uh, the, the clerics it's established have been trading outposts uh, and the, the, the rush of colony building de during the archaic period was mostly in the hands of all of the other polis um, uh, with Sparta and Athens staying out of it. So, uh, so Athens doesn't have a real presence to, to use as a base uh, on Sicily, and uh, most of the Sicilian powers, especially the great Greek city of Syracuse, are going to be hostile. But uh, Alcibiades, uh, you know, if, is, is convincing when he says that uh, he can get it done. And so the Sicilian expedition is mounted, this massive uh, armada is sent to Sicily under the command of uh, uh, Alcibiades and uh, the, you know, the, the two other uh, greatest uh, statesmen that are available uh, as generals, uh, Nicias uh, and a third man. And so the, the problem comes that after the, uh, the uh, expedition sets sail, the, it's discovered that uh, the night before he left, Alcibiades and his uh, boon companions engaged in a, a massive, uh, you know, possibly drunken violation of sacred herms throughout the uh, city of Athens. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Alcibiades appears to be guilty of a very serious set of religious crimes, and he's recalled from the expedition even after it's already set sail. Uh, uh, messenger ships are sent, um, you know, uh, uh, speeding after the ex uh, the expedition in order to uh, retrieve Alcibiades and bring him back to Athens to stand trial for these religious crimes. And so, uh, Alcibiades sees that uh, he doesn't stand a chance back in Athens, and so he flees, and he flees to defect to Sparta. Uh, and the Spartans are very uh, happy to uh, to give him and his expertise on Athens. Uh, more on that in a moment. But this leaves the Sicilian expedition in the hands of Nicias, who is not uh, you know who is neither physically capable nor you know uh, uh, you know emotionally ready, nor uh, a, a you know skilled at the level of Alcibiades in leading men or in any other way uh, except through. Um, you know, speeches in the Agora, or uh, before the assembly on the Penix. And so, uh, you know, Nicias leads the Sicilian expedition to its doom. It's not really his fault. Uh, uh, you know, the, it might still have been a disaster, even if Alcibiades hadn't been uh, recalled. But, um, you know, the, the Athenian army ends up being uh, trapped and uh, annihilated. Uh, the ships are burned. Uh, and uh, you know the the you know the the reports come back to Athens, the most um, uh, uh, you know the most horrifying news possible. Uh, you know the ships lost, men lost, all lost, uh, hundreds of ships, thousands and thousands of men, uh, uh, all destroyed, uh, uh, and uh, uh, or you know uh, taken prisoner, but. Uh, you know, very largely destroyed in Sicily. And so uh, where does this leave us? This leaves us with, uh, with uh, Alcibiades in Sparta, uh, uh, while Athens is profoundly weakened by this horrifying outcome to uh, what it had seen as its uh, you know, attempt to grab the brass ring, its attempt to, uh, to find a, a, you know, the boldest possible way out of its predicaments. Uh, Athens is now profoundly weakened in ships and men and in morale. And on top of this, Alcibiades is able to present to Sparta a real way to uh, uh, to bring uh, uh, Athens uh, to an even further state of weakness, which is to establish a permanent base in Attica at Decalea. Uh, the main problem that the uh, uh, 
the the Archidamian War had been experiencing in terms of of Athens itself was marching into Attica and attacking a few farms was not getting it anywhere uh, as long as the Athenians were behind the walls of uh, the of Athens along with the entire population of Attica. Uh, but uh, if there's a permanent Spartan base, you know, there's no way for the population of Attica to go back home after the Spartans have left, the Spartans never leave, and they're able to permanently harass, uh, you know, any town, village, community in Attica, uh, and uh, do whatever they can to uh, to force the uh, the uh, the the Atticans to uh, to to experience uh, economic misery and the loss of of everything that they have. Still, the main problem is. Uh, you know, Athens is a naval power, and Sparta is a land power. There, you know, Athens still has a navy, weakened and reduced, but still has a navy. Athens still can't be taken uh, except by defeating its navy. And so, uh, you know, Sparta, even after all of this time, even after uh, 20 years of war, they still can't get past this fundamental problem in the conflict between these two powers. There's only one solution for Sparta to acquire a navy. How can they do that? There's no other Greek power that would do it. All the Greek naval powers are Athenian allies. Uh, and so there's only one solution. There's only one other power in this part of the world that has a navy, and that's the Persians. And so the Spartans make a deal with the Persians. and. Uh, um, this is where you know the the, the war in, in many ways becomes the most tragic. Uh, you know, Athens has been uh, you know depressingly oppressive. Uh, it's uh, it's it's disheartening to see all of the horrible things that Athens does in this war. But Sparta makes a deal with Persia in which they sell out the Greek communities in Anatolia. Uh, and allow them to return to Persian rule. The very communities that Athens had freed in the, the wars of the Delian League uh, in the, the 470s and 460s uh, that, that Athens had liberated, Ionia and Caria and so forth, on the, uh, on the, 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 the western end of Anatolia, uh, Spart Sparta's deal with the Persians is you can have them back. You can rule over these Greeks again in return for giving us a navy by which we can defeat the Athenians. Well, the Persians, of course, uh, think this is a marvelous idea, and this leads to uh, now that Sparta has a, a navy, thanks to the Persians, uh, they're able to uh, uh, crushingly defeat the Athenians in a naval battle, the Battle of Agaspotami, which ends the war, uh, which uh, places Athens under Spartan dominion and allows Sparta to, uh, uh, to install there an oligarchic government that uh, eliminates democracy. And so, you know, the, the legacies of the Peloponnesian War are, are myriads. The, uh, the, the resources of, of the, the Greek world are drained in this, uh, in this you know, the, across three decades of constant uh, warfare and conflict. Uh, you know, the, the number of lives lost uh, amount to an entire generation. Uh, the nature of warfare shifts. And, and after this, there are... Uh, the, 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 the cities of the Greeks are no longer committing all of their citizens and, and uh, risking their citizen population to fight their wars. After this, the Greek cities are relying more and more on mercenaries, uh, which uh, you know, don't obviously have the same motivation as uh, citizens do, and uh, they're relying... Uh, on a more diversified uh, army uh, that includes not only the, the heavily armed hoplites, but also the more lightly armed peltasts, which uh, are, you know, both more flexible and uh, more, you know, expendable uh, than, uh, you know, the, the hoplite soldier. Uh, the, but the, the legacy of, of disillusionment 
uh, and in particular, the idea that if Sparta had won this war sort of fair and square, then this might have resolved the, the, the rivalry between Athens and Sparta. And Sparta would have been looked up to as, uh, you know, the natural leader of the Greeks. But the way in which Sparta, you know, sold themselves out and sold out the Greeks of Anatolia in order to win this war at any costs, especially the Spartans' behavior afterwards in, uh, in treating the Athenians not like fellow Greeks, but as, as conquered barbarians, practically, um, you know, turned uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Spartans into monsters in the eyes even of their, uh, their, their allies. Uh, and uh, the, uh, ultimately, it means that the Peloponnesian War settles nothing, because... Uh, as we'll see, the the next uh, several decades are spent in more wars amongst the Greeks, in more uh, efforts to establish hegemony by uh, Sparta, by Athens, and by a new player on the scene, Thebes, that's gotten fed up with uh, with Sparta and Athens trying to dominate them. Uh, ultimately, this is the war that breaks the Greeks. Uh, that, uh, that, that damages the Greek idea uh, and leaves them open to uh, conquest and dominion by the barbarian Macedonians to the north. Uh, but uh, the Greeks uh, still believe that they, you know, that they stand for something. Uh, and uh, they don't go out without a fight. The problem is that their fights uh, keep being directed at each other. We'll see how that turns out. As we go along for now, that's that.